Hi, my name is Leanne Elzey, and I am a school counselor in Alpine School District. Today I'll be talking to you about one aspect of Everyday Strong, and that is safety to fail. Safety to fail is helping kids and students feel safe to learn. It's not just to know it's okay to make mistakes, but it's to feel that mistakes and dis disappointments are opportunities to learn. Safety to fail is not just knowing, but believing that a child's worth isn't affected by their accomplishments and how well they do things. We want them to be willing to try new things despite the hard work, the effort, or the risk of failure. We want them to learn how to be resilient. We live in a culture that emphasizes perfection, which can result in feeling judged for making mistakes. We want kids to know failure is part of being human. We all make mistakes. And instead of focusing on the right or wrong of what happens, we wanna explore how it feels, what we can learn from it, learn how to solve problems and have an outcome of growth. Kids don't wanna disappoint their parents or their teachers. They wanna do well, but they don't always know how to navigate the mistakes that they make. There are so many issues out there that our parents and children deal with whether it's throwing temper tantrums or failing in school, kids need to feel secure that they are loved no matter what. We want them to feel valued and supported. Sometimes as parents, we fall into the trap of feeling like a failure when our kids struggle. We may end up focusing or reacting to our own feelings rather, rather than helping our child through their own difficulties. We can reframe mistakes and failure as opportunities to learn and grow. This reframing is not just for our kids, but for parents and teachers and other adults as well. It's important for us to step back, focus on what our child is feeling and help them know you believe in them and in their ability to learn from their experiences. You may be wondering, what are some signs to let me know if my child doesn't feel safe to fail? Uh, something that you might consider from a school counselor point of view is if your child doesn't want to talk about school or they don't want to talk about their friends, they don't want parents, you as a parent, to check their grades or talk to their teachers, those are some red flags as far as school goes. If they're withdrawn, if when you ask them how things are going and they avoid answering by saying, I don't know, um, just kind of shrugging it off. Those are things that I would worry about a little bit and think, what can I do to, to get through to this child and let them know that I care about them? When a student or a, a child responds with, I don't know, every time you ask them a question, I don't know, they may not feel safe. They may worry about your reaction or their teacher's reaction. Another thing to look for, they might be kind of giving up. Uh, things are hard enough that they'll say things like, why do I need to try? It's not going to make a difference anyway. I'm too far behind. Or this is way too hard. I can't do this. Or I just don't want to be in that class anymore. That's a terrible teacher. They'll, they'll say lots of negative things, but they won't get to the root issue of the problem. Uh, sometimes they're just reluctant to even start trying because they don't know how to do something and it's so scary for them to try and know that they're not going to be successful. And they don't realize that often we're not successful the first time we try something. We have to practice things over and over. Uh, things they might say is, I just want to stick with things I'm good at. Or, this is too much effort, it's just not worth it. Or, I know I'm not going to be good at it, so why should I even try? Those would be red flags. They may even have an all or nothing attitude of, if I can't do this, amazing, I'm not going to do it. Uh, and they let fear hold them back. And we want to help them realize that it's okay to be afraid. It's okay to try new things. And the only way we get past that is if we practice. And we're here to support them in that practice. Some green flags to say, I think my kid's doing okay and they do feel safe to fail or make mistakes. Uh, it might go something like this, you know, how was your day? Man, mom, I totally bombed that algebra test. I, I thought I studied, I thought I understood, but 
I just didn't get anything. Uh, I think I'm going to go talk to my teacher tomorrow. When they can admit they're struggling uh, and they have a plan, that's, that, that shows that it, they know it's okay. They, they don't feel great about it, but they know they can do something about it. Something that we don't want to do is we don't want to react in a blaming way when our kid fails. We don't want to say things that are hurtful, like, why didn't you just do it the way I said to, or, well, I guess you got what's coming for you, or looks like you dug yourself in a pretty big hole, now you got to deal with it. Uh, without giving them support, uh, you want to make sure that you're also not apathetic by saying, oh man, that's too bad, or sucks to be you, or you know the rules, I can't do anything about that. Another thing that you don't want to do is you don't want to compare your perspective to theirs. Like, if you had just done it like this, you wouldn't be in this situation. Or, I told you this would happen. Or, didn't you think about that outcome? Wasn't that obvious to you? Or, I've been expecting this to happen. Those don't open up the door to a kid feeling safe to fail. Um, another thing you want to be careful of is just saying, it's okay, we all make mistakes. That's true, but we also want a child to be accountable, and we want them to have a learning experience, not just a free pass when they make a mistake or fail something. So we want to be careful about uh, our words, what we say and how we say them, and be thoughtful in providing support. So instead, we want to do things that help them realize that they will need to be accountable, and that we will support them in that path. Uh, praising their effort rather than an outcome. I really admire all the effort you're putting into this. Even if they feel like they're gonna fail the, the math test, the fact that they've studied really hard is something to praise. Uh, I'm really impressed. You keep pushing yourself when this is hard. Or even though it didn't turn out the way you wanted, I saw how much you put into that, and I'm really proud of you for doing your best. It's also really important to acknowledge their feelings. Recognize that your kid is putting a lot of pressure on themselves. They don't want to disappoint you. They're comparing themselves to other people, and they may be embarrassed. They may feel like they, they're, they're just not as good as everyone else. It's even hard for us as adults to admit when we mess up. It's even harder for kids who haven't learned how to do that. Sometimes a kid will feel like a failure, that it makes them unreliable, and it suggests that they won't be successful in their future life. They take it as a big setback. It's all right and even helpful to say, that didn't really go the way you planned on it or the way that you wanted it did it. Or, I bet you're feeling really bad right now, you want to talk about it. You may say something like, that probably felt like a lot of wasted effort, but let them know that every effort that they put into it is going to help them in the long run. If you don't know how they're feeling, don't guess, just ask them, how are you feeling about that? That's got to be kind of hard. What do you think? And just let them talk. Another thing that's really important is being able to have empathy for what they're going through. And to say things like, Oh, I, I hate that feeling when you bomb a presentation. I remember that happened to me and it feels terrible. Or I've let people down before and I know that feeling and it's hard. And I want you to know you're not alone in this. The Everyday Strong Handbook reminds us not to moralize a moment that we had in our past or talk about how we overcame it unless the child explicitly asks the most important thing we're doing right here is communicating that you understand what it's like to feel embarrassed or to be disappointed in yourself or something that you did. One of my favorite questions uh, after exploring with a child how they feel about what's going on in their life when they've had a failure is to ask them, what are, what are you learning right now? And 
they're learning so much more than we realize and to give them the opportunity to verbalize what they're learning and to explain how they messed up and what led to that and, and what they can do in the future. If they say, I don't know, we can coach them, but often they have the best answers. They know exactly what they need to do. One thing that we want to point out for sure is that if a child has broken a rule or an established boundary, whether it's at school or at home, we want to make sure that they understand there is no free pass, right? We want them to understand these rules and boundaries are here for a reason. The next thing we want to do is we want to be able to offer choices or examples of how to make things right. For example, if they need to talk to their teacher and they're nervous about it, you might give them a choice. Would you like to talk to your teacher tomorrow or would you like to send them an email? Or you might do a little role play on what that might look like. Or they might um, not know how to talk to a friend if they've said something hurtful. And so you might talk about ways that they could make amends and give them a choice on what they're most comfortable with. To wrap this up, being a parent is hard. Every child is different. They don't come with their own rule books and we're learning as we go. When our kids struggle as parents, we often feel like we're failing, but we need to be careful not to get in the way of helping our child feel safe to fail and to believe that the relationship is okay despite the mistakes they make. We can model for our kids uh, what it is like when we fail in an experience that we have with them. We can come back and say, I didn't do that very well and I, I want us to feel safe when things aren't going well and what can I do to help you feel better about that? Some questions you might ask yourself uh, after a moment that didn't go well with your kids is, what can I learn from this experience? Did I get in the way with my own feelings? Am I focusing on how I can help them feel safer? You might ask yourself, how would I do it differently next time when I have this type of conversation with them? And do I have what we call a growth mindset, meaning I'm not gonna do it perfect. I'm doing this parenting thing the best that I can and I'm gonna make mistakes but am I taking these opportunities as um, stepping stones to being a better parent the next time? If there's something that I could really emphasize is an F doesn't stand for failure. It just is, there's a problem we need to fix, something that we need to figure out. They are stepping stones to growth and to learning. And so failures to me are just opportunities to learn and grow, not just in the thing that they're trying to learn, but also in your relationship with that child, because you are building a foundation of support when they have future problems in their life. You may be asking yourself, why? Why is this important? And I want you to know that there are great benefits in creating a safe place to fail and a safe place to learn. And those benefits, are an attitude of, of, I can learn, I can try new things, I can take risks, I have someone there to support me when I fall, and ultimately we want to build resilient kids and safety to fail. Learning to do that is a wonderful way to build resilience in our kids. You're doing better than you think you are, and you love your child and you know your child. And if anything really stood out today as you were listening, just try it. See how it goes. If it goes well, try it again. If it didn't, ask yourself what you can learn from that experience. And in all things, just let your child know that you love and care for them no matter what. I am confident that every effort you make to help your child feel safe to fail shows them that you really care about them and that you're there to support them no matter what.